we're going to go ahead and get started with our um, presentation. So hello, students. I can see you guys joining in. Um, welcome to Baylor Premier, and thanks for joining in our art and art history session today. Um, we will have Professor Jingles here to tell you a little bit more about Baylor's art and art history programs. And before we get started, I do want to let you guys know that we do have a Q&A opportunity available for you guys. So throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to pop your questions in that Q&A. And once he's done with this presentation, we're going to answer all of those for you. So without further ado, Professor Gingles, it's all you. Hi, uh, welcome everyone to Baylor University's 2021 spring premiere. I know that you have choices to make today, so I hope that this presentation is helpful to you. My name is Mac Jingles, Professor of Art in the Department of Art and Art History. My research is primarily in painting and drawing. I want to begin by telling you why Baylor is important to me. I have been teaching at Baylor for 10 years now and observed firsthand a working synthesis between faith and success since 1845 that I do not think you will find in another university. Our mission clearly states that we are committed to our faith, but also worldwide leadership. All tenured and tenure track faculty at Baylor University are proud of their church homes. I attend Austin Avenue United Methodist Church, where my children also go to preschool. This fact, coupled with a rigorous annual review process, assures that our students are being taught by professors hard at work in the fields. Please do compare the exhibition records of our faculty with other programs, and you will see the value of Baylor as I do. We have approximately 120 majors and seven concentrations to choose from, including photography, graphic design, ceramics, sculpture, painting, printmaking, and fabric design. We have 15 studio faculty and four art historians that exhibit, publish, and lecture around the world. Like Vienna, for example. Here we can see on the left a field study where a student is studying a Gustav Klimt, an archaeological dig in Israel, and students studying prints from the Martin Museum's collection. Two of our honor students working on one of the paintings from the Crest Collection in the Armstrong Browning Library. They had papers accepted at national conferences as a result of their research and restoration work on these paintings. In the upper right, you can see a class discussion led by Professor Nathan Elkins, a Roman and Greek specialist. It's because of him that our students were able to participate in the dig to the immediate left. His primary job was to identify all the Roman coins that were found in the synagogue. Bottom center, you see Professor and Chair Heidi Hornick, who is our Renaissance and Baroque art historian. She has become a world expert on an Italian painter by the name of Tassini. Bottom right, we have Professor Katie Larson, contemporary art historian at the Fort Worth Modern on a field trip study with our students. As the name implies, these introductory courses are critical to the success of our studio majors, but also art history majors and minors. Top right, you see Professor Benny Fountain teaching a drawing class, and bottom center, Professor Llewellyn teaching a drawing class. Both are successful, it's showing their work. Professor Fountain has gallery representation in Portland. Because we are focused on the visual arts in our department, I would like to show you some examples, but please take time if time allows to walk down our hallway and see what students are currently working on in their classes. Here are some examples from the foundation's 2D design class. Design and drawing are important to our majors, but also family consumer science. Drawing one is centered on learning how to see and draw from direct observation. The design classes are focused on the elements of art, line, value, shape, texture, and color in a way that accomplishes our goals visually. These are some examples from the foundation's 3D design class. Examples from our drawing one and figure drawing one classes. 
The students are guided through a number of problems that question how we see and engage with appearances. You can see that in ceramics, we offer wheel throwing. Students will also be taught numerous processes of making the forms, gas kiln firing and wood firing. Examples of student work. We also offer fabric design. Former student Lilith Chen in the top center was recently accepted to the MFA program at Cranbrook Art Institute. More examples from the fibers area. They don't make clothing per se, but they do make art objects through classes on surface design, weaving, and three-dimensional object making. On the right, you see something that looks like it could be worn. A 3D form and weaving. Half of our total majors are concentrated in graphic design. Professor Virginia Green teaches in this area. Students are given a wide array of challenges to prepare them for the field. They also required to take, they are also required to take a marketing class. A number of them participate in internships over the summer so let's say a student arranges work in their hometown area, they can get course credit and work experience towards their degree. We had the treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios, on campus and she visited with our design classes. As I understand it, she has the power to make changes to paper money. Only Congress can change the coins. In any case, she was very impressed with our student work and took these ideas back to Washington. Painting is another <clears throat> popular area within our department. You can see Professor Winter Rosolowski in the lower right image helping a student. Professor Rosolowski has representation with two galleries in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Some student examples. A few more examples. Photography is another popular concentration within our department. In the upper right, you see you can see Professor Jennings Sheffield helping a student. She is a practicing artist and exhibits widely within her field. Student examples from the photography area. Some more examples. <clears throat> Our photo students begin learning with film and they proceed to digital where they become familiar with reading software. Professor Kyle Shapu, pictured on the left is our printmaker. He teaches a drawing class in addition to lithography, relief, silk screening and etching. You can see examples of these processes to the right. Student examples. Student examples. Professor Robbie Barber, top center, teaches sculpture, wood sculpture in the fall, metals in the spring, and jewelry in the summer. He also teaches 3D design. Professor Leah Force, pictured in the lower right, is our undergraduate program director. She also teaches 3D design. Both of them are advisors to our majors. Only two departments out of 26 get to advise their own students, and we are one of them. Theater is the other. As you can see, Professor Barber is conducting an iron pour here for the metals class in the spring. Uh, one of our former students, Sam Panter, in the middle is uh, attending Cranbrook. Some examples from wood. 
and bronze. Here you can see the possible degree plans within our department. The BFA is considered our professional degree. And beneath that, you can see the concentrations listed. I'll give you a second to look at that. Or take a, a screenshot if you like. Through the Masters of Art and Teaching program, students can graduate with their BFA and MAT simultaneously after five years. This grants them an all-level teacher certification in art and the ability to enter the workforce at a higher pay scale. I hope that you can make some time to walk through our spaces and see current student works in the hallway. Uh, we display work on a regular basis for our guests, but also for the purpose of assessment. Here you can see some of our, our many guest speakers, uh, ceramicist Steve Hilton, painter John Hartley, ceramicist Daniel Gardner, uh, treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios, archeologist Jody Magnus, and photographers Larson and Talbert. The All Britain Art Institute based in Houston is a privately funded attachment to the art history program. Joe All Britain has graduated from Baylor with his law degree. He loved impressionism, owned newspapers, TV stations, and banks. In the fall semesters, the All Britain sponsor the contemporary classes and take domestic trips to art centers like New York City. And in the spring, they sponsor the 18th, 19th century classes with their international trips to places like Paris, London, Amsterdam, and Prague over the spring break. The students go well prepared for these trips and their research topics, and they know exactly where to go. The Albritons also help us bring in leading contemporary artists and art historians. We alternate each year between the two. The students are extremely fortunate to have this resource each year. Uh, on the left, you can see the painter Frank Stella, painter Injadika Aiken Yeely Crosby to the right, and the Starn Brothers photography and installation, installation below her. We have an impressive BFA exhibition currently on display in the Mart Museum of Art within the Hooper Schaefer Fine Arts Building. Some more shots from the museum. The Fine Arts Living Learning Center is one of the several living learning centers on campus. Engineering and pre-med have one, for example. Ours is a combination of music, fine arts, theater, and film. They have a live-in faculty that chaperone them to various places around Dallas and other arts centers. Please visit on our department's website and through our different social media platforms. This concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now and I will help you to the best way I can. Thank you. Awesome, that was great. Thank you um, so much. So just like you said, if you guys have any questions, we do have the Q&A, feel free to drop them in there right now. We'll wait for a little while and see if you have any questions. <clears throat> Okay, so we do have a question um, in the chat. So let's see. Elizabeth Montez asks, if her interest is in graphic design, does she have to take the BFA in studio um, course track or what do you recommend? Okay, um, so initially students begin as a BA and then we have a portfolio review at the end of their uh, foundations, which is after their first year. And, uh, and then as a graphic designer, you would, you would need to be a BFA 
uh, study. And at that point, you, you would choose graphic design and uh, coordinate with her on a, uh, a course schedule, if you will. Um, so you don't have to, um, I don't think that graphic design is a standalone uh, degree plan. I think, I mean, it is a standalone degree plan, but I don't think you would have to choose it as a studio um, like you would painting or ceramics or photography. Um, I'm, I'm not, I wanna make sure I understand the question. Um, is, that, is that what you needed? I'm not sure if that answered the question or not. The BFA is, um, I mean, the way that a lot of people do it. So she did write back. Um, she wants to clarify if she needs to enroll in the BA, then she'll take the path to the concentration to graphic design. That's correct. That is correct. Virginia okay. Green is the lead professor in the graphic design area. Uh, so if I'm, if you're not completely uh, satisfied with that answer, you can you can email her at Virginia underscore Green at Baylor edu. A lot of students, um, so they, be, they get accepted into the BFA and they take their classes and all the concentrations up to an intermediate level. And then in their last year, they kind of hone in on what it is that they want to uh, build a portfolio around. Um, so it, if that helps. Do you, um, so then she also asked, do you credit art classes from college board that she takes in high school? Okay, like an AP class? Uh, The, the short answer is, uh, yes, the, short, the short answer is yes, but um, we, we highly recommend that you, you take your, your drawing one and your photography one and your ceramics one and so forth uh, before taking on uh, your intermediate level classes like drawing two or photography two. Uh, just as an example, I teach uh, I teach drawing uh, one and two and figure drawing and advanced drawing and portfolio classes. And one of the things that I notice that is not often covered in um, your high school classes is uh, drawing from direct observation using sighting and measuring techniques. Oftentimes in high school, uh, students are taught to use a grid. This, this is just an example. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be wrong about that. And, and we can look at the work that's being done, um, but that's just a consideration. A lot of students elect to, to take all of the courses as opposed to um, uh, testing out of, or not testing out of, but skipping a, a beginning class. Does that help? Yeah, sounds good. So um, yeah, so that answered her question. 
Does anyone else have any other questions you'd like to get answered while we have Professor Jingles available? We're gonna stay here for a couple more minutes just to make sure. And I think I forgot to introduce myself actually. Um, my name is Poppy. I am an admissions counselor here at Baylor University. My territory is the Fort Worth and surrounding areas. So if any of you guys are in that area, feel free to reach me by um, email. I will also put that into the chat, but it's just poppy underscore Johnson at Baylor.edu. In a few more minutes for those questions, um, someone says, do you require an art portfolio to apply to Baylor? Uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, so you would begin as a BA student, and then we have a review at the end of your first year where we look at the work that's created in your foundations classes. And uh, generally, generally uh, students get through that just fine. Um, so the only review, uh, if, and it's, I wouldn't even call it selective admissions. The only review that we have is at the end of your first year, if uh, and when you choose to go the BFA route. We see the BFA and the BA degree as being 100% um, equal. The BFA degree is considered to be a professional degree. The BA uh, is, a, is a little broader, more of a liberal arts education where uh, you would be taking more language classes, for example, and a few less art classes, but we consider them to be equal. Awesome. Well, I think. I do want to add one thing. Um, the director of uh, undergraduate studies, Leah Force, is one of our uh, official advisors. I, I teach in the uh, Department of Art, but uh, she's a, an actual, she's an advisor and uh, she's really good at answering uh, some more of these uh, technical questions. Uh, so Leah underscore force at baylor.edu. Awesome. Well, it looks like we don't have any more questions and we are just at the end of our time. So I'd like to say thank you again to Professor Jingles for coming and answering questions and speaking um, on behalf of the art and our history programs we have here at Baylor. And I'd like to say thanks to all of you guys for attending this session. I'm sure you guys are probably going to attend some more today at Baylor Premier. So with that being said, I guess I, guess I hope you all have a great day and see you next time. Sick and bears.